Hey, what's up, guys? It's Matt uh, coming to you from Odds Jam, and today I will be previewing Monday Night Football. Um, so we got the Bucks and the Giants. Uh, looks like the spread is kind of settled on Giants ten and a, plus ten and a half or plus eleven, depending on where you look. So obviously the Bucks are heavy favorites here. Um, money line, if you're so inclined. Looks like the, you can get uh, the, the Giants at plus four forty and the <laughs> the Bucks at minus five ten. Uh, obviously. If you're going to have a play on that, I'd probably just sprinkle some on the Giants' money line. Uh, not that I think they're going to win, but at plus 440, you got some pretty good odds. And it looks like it is. Um, there's some positive expected value there with the perfect line being at plus 418. Um, and you're getting them at 440. But um, but for today's video, I'll be just giving out two positive expected value plays. Um, they won't be the Giants' money line, I can assure you that. Or or the Bucks, even though they technically they are positive expected value based on the odds jam perfect line. Um, but I have one player prop and one game prop. Um, I've already actually locked these in myself, and I'll just include a screenshot at the end of the video so you can see that um, the odds I got them at and everything like that. Um, and just so I don't you know take time locking it while we're on the video just to save time. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So for the player prop, I love to just scan... <clears throat> the um, positive expected value page, and then I'll just control F the game. So I'll type in Giants. Looks like there's uh, three plays that I can choose from. Uh, the first one, the Tom Brady passing completions, look like the, the value is on the over 26 and a half. Um, you can also get the Tom Brady touchdowns over two and a half at plus 110 on two sports books. Looks like there's some value there. And then the very last one is the Evan Ingram under 35 and a half receiving yards. Um, so the one I ended up settling on was actually the first one up here, the Tom Brady passing completions over 26 and a half. Um, and uh, there's a couple reasons, football reasons why I like that, but just to give you the math behind it. So the odds jam perfect line has it at minus 134 um, and we're getting it at minus 106. Um, so the, the expected value, um, as you can tell, is positive based on the difference there. And then if you go to the calculator, the, the uh, win percentage based on those odds gives it about a 53% chance of hitting. Um, and then if you want to go to the calculator and look look up the um, – calculate the Novig fair odds. So it was minus 134 and I believe plus 101. Yep, plus 101. And it looks like it calculates the true line at minus 115. So that is where we get the 53% uh, winning percentage based on the true line, uh, based on the odds jam perfect line. And if you're unfamiliar with uh, what no vig means and all that stuff, um, definitely check out the odds jam page, uh, page. This explains it in much further detail, but essentially vig is the juice that sports books charge. So the example they give here is that two sides of a bet are minus 110 each. If you bet 100 on each side, uh, the, the sports book will guarantee to profit 10 bucks because one side, if you win, will profit 90. And then the other side, obviously, if you lose, we'll lose 100. So they get that 10 there. Um, so whenever you whenever you place a bet, I always like make sure to find the odds jam perfect line. And then I make sure to find what the no vig odds are. And then uh, you compare that. So like I said, the no vig odds are minus 115. We are getting them at minus 106. Um, so even uh, better odds than when you take out the vig, which is always good, which is always something that you want to do when you're um, making these bets. Um, and for football reasons, uh, the Giants... Uh, they they have a they're not a great team obviously but they have a decent run defense um, and if you look at Tom Brady's stats um, and you look at the how many completions he has um, so it looks like he's gone under that twenty six and a half he's done that a couple times so uh, against Atlanta where they had a bunch of pick sixes uh, that game against New England which you remember was in the rain. Uh, the game against Chicago where they just blew him out, where he, they didn't really need to pass it that much. And then this past week against Washington um, in a loss. But um, in, mo in most games, he does it. And obviously, he has some passing attempts up to the 40s and the, and the 50s. Um, and in a game like this where, while it's ex projected to be uh, a, a blowout or a big spread, I do think that uh, they're going to make it a point to kind of get Brady and the offense on track after last week's debacle. Um, I don't, I don't know what happened with the, that game against Washington. Uh, you know, Washington won again this week, so maybe they're just finding their stride at the right time. But um, I'm putting my faith in uh, Brady and on Bruce Arians of a figuring things out and also b getting the offense back on track. Um, so. While I don't project this game to be the 11 point blowout that the spread entails, I do think that this is going to be a game where they make it a point to uh, get Brady on track. Um, and one positive with that is injury news. They are getting Gronk back. Um, fortunately, Antonio Brown is still out with the ankle injury. And of course, he finds himself in another controversy, but I won't talk about that here. Um, but 
Um, they are, like I said, they are getting Gronk back, so they still have they have Gronk, and then they still have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, and then they also have you know a little bit of a, a good passing down back in Giovanni Bernard, and then they also have been doing a ton of screens to uh, le- to uh, Leonard Fournette, who isn't the greatest receiving back, but still gets a ton of work. So that over twenty six and a half, I'm a big fan of. I, I, like I said before, that you can kind of you can understand the times he didn't get it and, um, you know, project moving forward. And a team like the Giants who have a decent run defense, def- decent run stoppers, uh, Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams being t- the two of them. And then they have Blake Martinez, who's really not a good coverage linebacker, but he is a good uh, run rushing linebacker. So um, the 26 and a half completions I really like, um, as you can see that here. Again, you can get that on FanDuel at minus 106. Uh, and then the true line that we calculated was minus 115, which gives it a 53% chance of hitting. And again, you're getting that at minus 106, which has a lower percent chance just based on those odds. Um, and um, yeah, so that'll be my, my player prop. Like I said, I uh, will have a screenshot at the end uh, detailing both of both of the plays that I've made. And um, so the next one, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the next two player props. I didn't want to force one for the sake of having just having a bunch of picks for this video. So what I ended up doing was finding the game um, on the Odds Jam, just the, the Odds Jam page. And then I looked through uh, a couple different options to see if there were any positive expected value plays. And there were, and there's one that I that I really like. So technically, there, you could take money line on each side and it's positive expected value. Um, like I said at the beginning, <laughs> I'm not going to, no one should ever take a minus 510, even in a parlay. Uh, but if you want to sprinkle some on the Giants' money line, I mean, the Colts beat the Bills on the heavy underdogs. The Texans won yesterday against the Titans, heavy underdogs. Obviously, these things happen. Uh, so if you can catch one at the right time. And if you remember, this is a game last year where the Giants kept it close. Um, the Bucks did end up winning, but it was close. Um, and the Giants kind of, you know, they kind of not necessarily dominated them, but they had a good game. Um, so the spread, uh, well, I'll skip that because that's actually where I do have a play. And the, the total points, so... Um, the way you can scroll through these different tabs and find if there's value is to just highlight the odds jam, find out which row column the odds jam perfect line is. And then whenever there's a situation where the odds jam perfect line doesn't have the best odds, that's where you can find some positive expected value. So looks like there's some on the over 48, some on the over 48 and a half. Um, not, not a great. And then looks like, I mean, there, this isn't actually positive expected value. This just, there's just a uh, neutral expected value because they're the same. And then on the under 15 and a half. So looking at this, I don't really see a great play because there's a small positive expected value on the over 48 and 48 and a half, but there's also a small expected value on the under 15 and a half. So a, that might be a good, um, a good attempt to middle. Uh, obviously that wouldn't be uh, like an arbing opportunity. So it would be tough, but you, if you, if you do hit that 49, you're gold, you're golden. But the fact that there's a positive, <clears throat> excuse me, expected value on both the over and then a couple points later, the under makes me feel that there's not, there's not a great play on the total. So I'm not going to do anything on the total. Um, so what I ended up settling on was uh, the spread. And again, the way I, I found it was you just highlight the odds and perfect line. You find the column it's in, and then you find a situation where it differs. Um, and it looks like the Ajam perfect line, there's some positive expected value consistently if you're taking the giant spread. So G- Giants plus eight, there's positive expected value. Same thing at eight and a half, same thing at nine, same thing at nine and a half, 10 and a half, 11, goes all the way down uh, and it pretty much stops after after 11. And then again at 12 and a half. So what I actually ended up settling on was uh, I just took the spread, I just took the Giants plus 11. Um, like I said, the... You, the, the perfect line has it at minus 110. The expected value um, is getting it on FanDuel at minus 105. And if you look at this game last year, um, it was close, right? It was, I think it ended up being, yeah, it was a two-point game. Uh, the Bucks needed to come back at the end uh, and score. Um, it did go under that that total. So if you did want to take the under 50, 50 and a half, that wouldn't be a terrible play. Uh, that won't be one of my official ones. Um, but if I were to give out a play, I'll probably take that. Um, again, it, it actually, that one, if you took the over 48, that one would have middled because obviously the total hit 48 and then um, would have been under the 50. But um, the official play, like I said, that I'm doing is going to be the um, it's going to be the spread. So if you look at the the box where the Giants were actually up 14 to 6 at halftime and then the Bucks kind of came back in the second half to win. But for whatever reason, this Giants team played the Buck played the Bucks tough last last year. I know I'm not 
uh, expecting it to be a game where the Giants uh, are leading the whole time and the Bucks have to, you know, come back at the end. But I do think it's going to be closer than people expect. Um, and the fact that, you know, the uh, the odds jam perfect line consistently finds ex- positive expected value on the Giants starting at eight points, I figured I would just take the spread. Um, you know, I really consider taking them at 12 and a half, but... I just liked the minus 105. I like the better odds. So you put uh, 50 on that, you're making close to your money back. So that'll be my second and only or and last official play is going to be um, the Giants plus 11. Again, this is one's on FanDuel at minus 105. Um, so to recap, uh, that'll be the first play. What I'm putting 100 on my main bet is going to be is going to be the uh, Brady over 26 and a half completions. Uh, that's minus 106 on FanDuel. And then my second play, which I'm only going to put 50 on, is going to be the Giants uh, plus 11. Um, and then just to give a quick recap, so um, these positive expected value plays have gone well for me. So I've profited almost three grand from them. Uh, and this is just since week two of the NFL season. And this is on you know a bankroll that probably isn't as high as most people that do this. Um, I think my I have my bankroll set at $750. $750. So um, the, the, so yeah, so these have been extremely profitable. I've been, I've been definitely, uh, been enjoying how well I've been doing. Um, and yeah, that, that'll wrap it up for me today. So happy betting, happy watching, and I'll come back later with a uh, Thanksgiving preview. All right. Have a good one.